Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the capital of Clearwater County. And in today's episode, we are going to actually build it. Uh, in the previous episode, we spent a bunch of time laying things out and getting a nice roadway network set up through here. But today we're going to flesh out those ideas and get the first bit of our development going and really talk about why anyone would develop here to start out with. But before we do that, I think we need to name this community. In July, Flame gave an excellent name for the community, Van Buren, after President Martin Van Buren, who was an early prominent first generation Dutch American who was anti-slavery uh, and also an architect of the two party system. Generally seen as kind of a mediocre president, he presided over the Panic of 1837 which interestingly was a depression I didn't know about. <laughs> so there was a, a Great Depression back in the 1800s as well. So let, let's get this renamed. And one of the nice things about this is there are a lot of Dutch, uh, there's a lot of Dutch ancestry in the states that uh, preceded Superior. So Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota, and Michigan. So we're gonna we're gonna talk more about the composition of the community in the next episode, uh, and or the state rather, and uh, we'll do that when we unveil the state flag, which I'm really excited about. If you want to participate in the flag design competition, check out the Discord server. You got a couple more days, and I'd highly recommend you take part in it. You'll get your flag created into an asset, and I'm gonna give you a little steam, uh, a steam reward. <laughs> so uh, let's dive into the build. Okay, first of all, one of the things that's been bothering me is we have all of these dead trees. So I want to get this fixed. We're going to take this out uh, of, of fall mode and bring back some of the greenery. I'm starting to see leaves pop up on the trees near me, and we're going to see it here as well. Okay, and now we're back, and look at this. Now you can tell it's actually a forest behind there. And the whole county just looks spectacular now. I was really missing the greenery throughout here, and I think that this really does the trick. So I think today we've got a couple of questions to ask ourselves. Why would anyone develop anything here? Uh, and I think that's a good question. Right now, there's no reason to. Uh, there's a plan for a community and a couple of ideas about where key buildings could go. But if you were going to develop a new building, I think Ashland would probably be the most appropriate place to do so. And the reason for that is simple. There's activity there. There are people. There is a. There are many public services available to you. There's commerce. And there's plenty of farmland that you could reasonably whoa purchase and uh <laughs> gonna step away gonna step away <laughs> there's ample farmland that you could purchase and develop into residential properties or commercial properties whatever it may be so there is there's no reason to be right here without some sort of formal investment and thankfully the federal government has stepped up to the plate and is offering the state of superior uh, capital funding for roadway projects uh, for the main, the main arterial network around here to get connected into here for an interchange over here for some utilities and some core city services. And without that, I don't know why you would develop here. Th th there's going to need to be some sort of public investment in some you know basic local roads, uh, something to get this area going. And so that's, that's what we're going to focus on right now. And the very first thing is the roadway network. So we're going to go fairly basic, and over time, we will upgrade some of these roads as things uh, improve in these areas. Now, I'm going to need to use Anarchy quite often today uh, because of the roadway network that we develop. So, uh, in fact, why don't we just leave this? We're going to get we're going to we're going to focus on very small areas to start out with. And what I think we're going to focus on is this little quadrant right here. So we'll build city services. Uh, we'll build out this park a bit and get a start on the university. And uh, that should be enough to start spurring development in this area. We're also going to bring transit in here because uh, with the federal government bringing this significant money in here, one of the things that was requested was transit service. And I think a train station to get people into the community makes a ton of sense. I know that that's me going back at what I said in the previous episode, but we're giving it some thought. You know, my mind can be changed. I, I find myself to be a, or I, I pride myself on being a, a fairly pragmatic person. And there were a number of great comments about this. Uh, so I'm very excited to do so. So we're just extending this arterial out here. And in fact, I, I think that this is the wrong call for a portion of this. So why don't we grab a highway here and we'll extend the highway basically to the boundary of Van Buren. And 
that will get people in here quickly and then they'll switch on to what well actually let's we'll extend this even a bit further it's a planning road so i'm not overly concerned about that and then they can take the roadway network right into the heart of the community here we're going to also upgrade this to a four-lane highway now there's going to be a lot of overbuilding in this community uh, it's going to be planning for future development not necessarily planning for what is there right now considering nothing is there <laughs> so this to me makes perfect sense now this is no good we have an at-grade interchange with not even an interchange it's just an intersection with a highway and we already know that the highway is going to have some issues so we're going to need to fix that uh i think for the time being we're just going to steal this interchange and plop it over there we're going to need to do something more significant in the future but i i foresee a point in time where we need to do something very significant over there so let's not select our trees <laughs> we don't need to copy all of those and we'll grab this right here copy it and i made a mistake <laughs> we've got to get rid of this highway to back this up just a little ways and we'll give that another go we'll spin this around so i probably should have this pause but we'll we'll live with a bit of strangeness <laughs> for the time being so i'm going to get rid of that and i'm going to even get rid of these center barriers that we had on the other highway we don't need this to be an exact replica of what we did over there. We just need it to work. And obviously this is pretty ugly right now. We've got some weird stuff going on. So we're going to need to do a few things here. So we'll, we'll do that in just a moment. Ah, this is interesting. There must have been some node controller things happening there that led to that looking pretty bad. So I'm going to use straight slope right there and upgrade this because I wouldn't be able to get that straight with a highway segment. And here, we're going to take our highway and just pull it right in. And this looks terrible, <laughs> but it's going to be easy enough to fix. I'm just going to use uh, move it to give myself enough height on these things to, to get underneath the highway and to clean up some of the wonkiness here. We're also going to use the intersection marking tool to make this look a little bit nicer as well. I'm not going to go crazy on it, considering I believe that this will be replaced likely sometime in the near future, but we do want it to be reasonable for now. I want to try something different here. We've got this pretty ugly jaunt in the road, and I'm learning how to use the network multi-tool a little bit better now. So we're going to arrange these at line, and I think I can make this, yeah, look at that, much more smooth and nicer. That is a much better connection. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here. I'll see how far it lets me go. Well, I don't like the last two things it did, <laughs> or at least this. This looks pretty bad, but we can easily go through and... Nope, we can't easily go through and undo that. <laughs> it's not going to let it happen. And now I'm guessing we have a whole bunch of nodes that are just not necessary anymore. So I just want to clean a bit of this up. So there we go. I gave this extra length so that uh, it would look a little bit nicer and the, the grades would be a little less extreme. Because uh, I think on the other on the other version of this interchange, the grades are just a little bit too much. So there we go. And I should pop back here and do the exact same thing. We'll fix the grades there. And I think we're in a pretty good spot. I am going to use the intersection marking tool. We'll make a couple improvements here right now. Okay, so we've got, a, we've got most of our marking done. I'm, I'm at least satisfied enough with it. I do want to clean up some of these bends though. So just come through here and make ends straight. And we're going to just see a much better finished product through here. Okay, so this is looking much better in my opinion. Uh, but there's a little bit more that we need to do. And that is focus a little bit on TMPE and make sure that our lanes aren't that, that we're not allowing looping and things of that nature through here. So I'm going to come through and control click. So control S through here. Control S. Control S. Same thing there as well. So now it makes a little bit more sense. You can come through here, merge off. You can't make a right onto, onto here. If you want to get onto the highway here, you'll need to exit here to get up there. So 
all important things. I missed one right here, so I think that does the trick. We do have some ugly lumpies and bumpies through here, so I want to take care of some of these. Just That's an extra node that's not needed. I think that's about it. Uh, and I could have certainly done more here if I wanted to, but uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna not do that. No need to get wild. I'll lower that just a bit. I'm noticing some odd stopping through here, and that's another TMPE thing. So we're going to come through here, select our junction restrictions, and just make sure yeah, you can't proceed through. That's going to be a problem. So I just want to look at all of these and make sure that that's selected so we don't have any odd stopping through here. There we go. And now hopefully everyone proceeds through unimpeded. No traffic stuck through here, so I'm happy. The last thing I want to do is kind of do a little bit of earthwork around here. So we're not going to focus a ton on landscaping right now, uh, but I do want to make sure that the grading at least appears to be a little more rational because this would certainly be smoothed out a bit. Much better. So now we have a way to get into our community and you see that there are already vehicles taking the trip, which is very exciting. I don't know where they're going considering the roads don't connect, but you know, <laughs> whatever works for them. Uh, next, I think there was a bit of a mess here. Um, right now we're funneling all of our arterials right into this area right here and that just doesn't make a ton of sense, just bluntly. So what we're going to do is create another arterial. Now we're going to keep it uh, looking like a two-lane road. I'm okay with that, but I don't want this to, to have... Uh, I don't want to have to funnel all the traffic down through here. So I'm going to eliminate this road right here and try to make a connection with what, what appears to be Anna Street and West Winston Alexander Street. And we're just going to take a four-lane big urban road through here and make our connection. And that's pretty ugly. We're going to have to do a bit of work to get that looking good. There's an extra node in there, and that's the problem. There's an extra node right there as well. So we'll need to, to get that fixed. You can see that right next to each other, there's two nodes. Ah, and I broke it. <laughs> Go figure. That's okay, because now that we have our new tool that helps us line up roads, I think we're going to use that here anyway. Because that's not a perfect junction. I was trying my best, but it's not going to work. Oh, and I am just struggling. And it looks like at some point my node snapping came off. So that can be a problem at times. It's really, really a struggle. Okay, so let's curve this naturally. And that's too much. So you can come through and click and see what it's going to do for you. And I actually really like that curve. Uh, I want to see if it works with our terrain. We'll make it work. Terrain, you're going to respect us today because <laughs> we, we need this. Oh, that is absolutely a joy. I love that. I love that so much. Um, and this curving, it, 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 it's fine. I think that we're going to want to bring this road up as well to make a connection. Otherwise, you have a very extreme block length. There we go. And now you see the cars proceeding through here fairly swiftly, no problems. That's exactly as we want it. So I do want to give priority to this road. So what we're going to do, because it's American, we're going to add stop signs all along any streets intersecting with this and give priority to this road. We're going to do the exact same thing here. And at this location, we are going to need a, a, a uh, we're going to want a signal eventually. Uh, but for the time being, the stop sign is going to be just, just fine. And I think that should take care of us all the way through. You see the priority all the way through. So we are good. Now, there's something I want to do here because I'm really excited about this. So Mulligan Drive, that ends right here. Not anymore. Bradley Drive is no more. And look where it ends. Mulligan Drive ends right in the center of our new capital. So that's very exciting in my opinion. So here, we're going to again change the priority. Add stop signs all the way through here and we will upgrade this road. And we're going to upgrade all around the capital, and then I'll upgrade the rest of the roads that we're going to build on today. And I'll need to turn collision off for just a moment. There we go. Now I think we're in a good spot once we get these roads upgraded as well. Okay, so the areas that now have normal colored roads that aren't planning roads are going to be the roads that we're going to focus on today. 
Uh, so we're going to add zoning through here and we're also going to add in some of our city services. So the very first thing I want to do is think about our water and our power because that's going to be a problem. If we take a look here, we can see that our electricity availability is fine, but our water generation is not so great, nor is our garbage collection. So all of this is coming through the federal grants that we have. And the interesting thing about federal grants, so you get these grants and they cover the capital, but not the operating expenses. So the what that means is, is basically you can build it, but all the maintenance, the, the federal government paid for the building of it, but all the maintenance is on you, municipality. So uh, thankfully, this is an urban area. In a rural area, this can be a problem. You can have developers that decide to, to go ahead and build fairly significant uh, infrastructure, be it roads or, um, you know, roads, parks, things of that nature, that a rural town cannot afford to maintain. And as a result of that, they end up with gleaming infrastructure, gleaming parks, wonderful streets that the tax base cannot afford. So I don't think that's going to be a problem here after a while. Uh, it will be for the time being, but we're going to deal with it. And we are going to uh, go ahead and plan our city with all of this new, excellent infrastructure in place, because otherwise there's no reason to develop here. So in this area, we're going to start our, our little utility campus. We're going to need the ability to have some sort of water processing in this area. So we are going to add that over here for the time being, along with some trash processing. So we'll go through and I think, you know, we, we don't have every building unlocked yet because of our population. So I think the advanced inland eco water advanced inland water treatment plan is probably the best bet for us. The non eco variant actually produces less pollution, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and use this. It is very expensive. Uh, no, actually, it's not <laughs> I'll just it's very inexpensive. There we go. <laughs> so we'll place that here. And then for trash collection, I, I want to do something fun. So we have this this waste disposal unit from the Japanese content creator pack and it creates a bit of power, which will give us power here, which we need. And it provides trash collection. So we're going to add that here. We're going to back that just off from here. Now, there's a very purposeful reason that I'm doing this. Uh, I want to make sure that we are preserving enough right of way for future highway expansions, should there be any. And uh, so we're going to we're going to preserve that right of way, even if it means that we have to build up here a little bit. Turn off our city vitals. We're going to be fine. And we'll get rid of a, a bit of our sand there. And I'm going to just tap into this so we get our beach back. So there we go. That is good. We need to connect this up to our little community. We'll put the water pipes underneath the road right where they belong and run this underneath the highway, which is an odd choice. <laughs> We've already discussed that, but the nice thing about this is we have our connection over here already. So we might as well take advantage of that. And I do think that we're going to need to run a power line from this location into our community as well. Uh, not because it's necessary. You can see that this will actually power uh, this area over here, but I, I think it's good practice to have redundancy. So we're going to run a power line right down the edge here. This will be a transmission line and we'll need to add a substation as well. And I did turn anarchy off because I'm concerned that if I do not, I will start doing things I'm not supposed to do. And this will quite unfortunately end up in a fairly prominent location. We are going to need to hide that behind some fences or walls, uh, but we need to have this there. It's just that, you know, infrastructure is a, 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 one of those necessary things. So there we go. And I think it would be really nice to loop it around this way, but we have a transmission line out here towards Shorewood, and we are going to extend that transmission line out this way. So I'm going to turn this off and we will start running this. And it's funny, I'm looking for the best place to begin this, and there aren't a lot of great options. So we're going to tee in here and run across. And then we'll start following the highway. So there we go. Now we're totally connected in. This is connected in, in over here. 
and we have more than one power source. We're going to probably want to add one around here as well, but for the time being, I think this is pretty good. So we are going to want to, well, we're going to need to upgrade our road first of all. Otherwise, our substation is not connected to anything. So that's the thing with the planning roads is they do give you the opportunity to place things on there, but the road doesn't actually exist. So that was the same thing we were seeing over here with the courthouse is we, we had, in theory, uh, the ability to place something there, but it didn't know it was on a road. So uh, I think that uh, we're, we're in a good spot with utilities now. Now we just need to get going with our zoning. You know, and after giving it some thought, zoning probably isn't the right approach right now. I think we need to look at some of our city services that we still haven't placed in here. We want to be able to spur development here, and that is what's going to get us there. So I picked up some really interesting assets that I'm really excited to introduce to the build. So these are all assets by uh, Sencorn. Uh, so these are a public library, a doctor's office, a police station, uh, an event hall, which we're going to use as our city hall, and also this lovely fire station. So they're really modern, really uh, unique feeling for this particular build, but I think it makes sense. And the reason it makes so much sense is, you know, if you think about it, this development, uh, we're, we're really kind of pouring money in here to try to, to make it uh, an attractive place for new development. So uh, I think that we're going to create a, a bit of a government complex back here. And we're going to start that right here. I don't want to overpower the views of the courthouse. And we are going to move the courthouse and create a bit of a plaza in front of it. Uh, but on the side, I want to have some of those other core city services. We're going to plant some more trees back here eventually, but we're going to clear it for the time being. And we're going to level this out a bit to work some of these in. So we'll level that off. And I want to have a small 1U road uh, where we can place some of these buildings. So we'll start out with police and fire. In my mind, that that's the most logical place to begin. And we might move these, but I just want to get them put into place. And let's take a look at these buildings. So these are absolutely gorgeous. In fact, seeing this makes me realize that we can't face them that way. We'll face them out this way and add in parking behind them. They're just too attractive to hide looking at each other like that. <laughs> so we'll do we'll do better. So we'll scoot these in, which will give the front access priority so that the police and fire vehicles can leave. And we are going to need to upgrade this road. Oh, that is that is nice. So I also want to set the fire trucks here because we have uh, some really excellent fire truck assets created by Alex. Uh, again, the more assets. Thank you so much for putting these together, Alex. Uh, also put together the Clearwater Police Department vehicles. So uh, the Sheriff's Department vehicles. So we'll get those incorporated into the build as well. So uh, I, w I do want to show you what these look like. And thankfully, they've put together these wonderful ploppable assets as well. And we can show those off. We can put one right. We could actually load one up right here if we really wanted to. But just beautiful assets. So we've got this fire ladder right here. We've got two different varieties. And then we also have this absolutely wonderful ambulance. So we are going to be using all of those in today's build. So we got that set up there. But I want to come through the backside. And truthfully, a part of me wants to set this back a little ways. But it's not, it's probably not going to work. Uh, because of the fire trucks loading off the front. So that's not a big deal. But in the back, I do want to add some parking. So let's just extend this back just a little ways and provide just enough parking for the police and fire department employees. Because I don't want this to turn into parking lot simulator, <laughs> we are going to just use these uh, lovely parking lot assets. I really, really like these. I know they're a controversial pick. They always are. But, to me, they just make so much sense to use. So, let's set the height of this to be level with the front, and then we're going to need to level this back a little ways further. And then we're going to need a fence around this as well. And I think that the, the city park fence works really well for these, so we're going to go for that. Uh, it'll give enough space and privacy. It'll work really nicely. 
and I turned angle on so I could try to maintain some semblance of being straight here, but it didn't work. Uh, it, it may have made more sense to use the road guideline or the uh, the grid for this. You can see that at least with this, we're kind of able to maintain it. There we go. Good enough. We ran that inside of the building, and it looks like it's connected then. So I'm happy with that. All right. So with the two of those, we've got a couple more buildings to place. So we have got this beautiful event hall, and as much as I would love to put this in a more prominent location. I am concerned that it could overshadow the courthouse, which is not at all what we want to do. So I'm going to come through here, we'll look at relevance, and we have this event, this event hall. So we're going to use this as our city hall. I'll place it there for now, but what we're going to do is back this off a little ways. So we're going to back this off, focus it on the side here, and then we're going to use our zonable paths. And truthfully, it's not upset. I don't know why it's not upset, but it's not. <laughs> I, I thought for certain it was going to be very unhappy that it doesn't have adequate roadway access, but apparently it's okay. So with that in mind, I will move this road over just a bit. We'll make our connection right there. So there we go. Now this fits into this area. I'm going to add some paths and bushes and really kind of liven this up just a little bit. You know, I'm going to go with less is more here. I was thinking of adding a whole bunch uh, to this locate, a whole bunch of landscaping, but sometimes you just got to leave it a little bit sparse and let there be some open space. Now I am going to add flags here in the future, but for the time being, we are just going to stick with uh, a flagless existence. <laughs> and we'll certainly improve that in the days to come. So we will extend the roadway network around here. And now we've got our nice little campus here with my guess is water pipes. Oh, look at that. Not underneath the building. So I am very pleased with that. Just a nice little facility with a great view of the water. And behind it, we should actually, this is four-sided architecture. And oh, we've got, a tr we got trees popping through because I turned on anarchy. Oh boy. Okay, so I don't know why. <laughs> Every now and then, I, I stump myself with all of the, uh, all of the anarchies. <laughs> so much, so much anarchy here. So, all right. Well, we're, we're we actually we we don't have buildings uh, or trees popping through the building now. So I'm gonna count that as a win. So here I'm going to extend that sidewalk over, and then again I want another sidewalk connecting up at the back. Yeah, I, I wanted to make sure that is doors that got bike racks here. Perfect. Love it. And we'll mirror what we've done over here. It's pretty Spartan, but that's completely fine. Okay, and I'm really, really liking this. I think that it looks very good. Now, the one thing about this is we don't have any parking. So that is certainly a concern here. So that might be something. And actually, I'm going to take back some of this landscaping here and add in some parking. Here, we're not going to cordon it off. We'll be just fine. And there we go. Not perfect, but it it's uh, it's going to do the trick. Except for these. These are not spaced very well. We'll just add one more. There we go. Uh, so now there's a place to park. You'd assume that street parking is okay here. City halls aren't well known for having excellent parking lots, so uh, I'm not overly concerned about the lack of parking. I'd totally expect to see more behind the police department and maybe even a shared parking arrangement where it's the, it's the expectation that if there is a need for overflow, the city hall staff must walk from one of these lots over here. Now, this is a pretty ugly view from here uh, to see the parking lots right next to City Hall, or ne right next to the county courthouse. So we are gonna landscape this pretty generously. And uh, I'm gonna look for, there's a leafy bush. And then we'll save this tree and add this right here. There we go. So that's a little bit better. We're, we're hiding some of the ugliness that, that would be here. Now with the courthouse, I wanna back this up a little ways as well. And we'll need to, to modify our terrain to accommodate what we're looking to do. And truthfully, I'm at the point where I, I'm starting to believe it, it's a good idea to run a road 
behind here and open up a shared parking facility. So I'm just gonna run this back for now. And I'm gonna see if I can change the load on the city hall to rather than load from the front, load from the back. And that's pretty well centered. Now what I'd love to do is go ahead and use my pedestrian zonable paths here and send those right down. So that gives us a crossing right here. And I could see how these look. I am concerned that if I get a bit too fancy with it. Yeah, I don't, I don't love how that looks. And that looks a little overdone as well. So we'll place that right here. That makes the building happy. We can turn this on. Uh, eventually we'll get here today and we will get these things linked together. So this could be some sort of plaza now and we will extend our fencing here. And then what we're gonna do here is have some nice flowering trees. So I have been in love. I think you guys are all well aware at this point. I absolutely adore the new trees found in the content creator pack. So we are just gonna use some of these here in a row to frame the new city hall. And I, I think that we are going to go ahead and level a bit further and we're gonna have a park access behind the city hall. So that'll be a nice through street there. And I don't want to overly encourage the use of, of that street, but I do think it's important to have there. And then I'll also add a fence here so that we are framing the city, uh, the, the, the county courthouse. So I really like that, I think that's nice. Um, although it's unbalanced, which is gonna drive me crazy. I have two trees on one side and three on the other. And on the other side of this complex, we have one more key building that I want to work in here, and that is the library. So we have this beautiful public library. It is very, very large though. So I'm going to set this even further back. And that's our anarchy right there. <laughs> I always forget about that one. All right, so I'm going to upgrade this road and at least get some access to the library. And then I want to scoot this back a little ways again, and we're going to add some parking back here. So all of the parking for the courthouse will either be on street or using one of these shared parking facilities. And we'll need to add in some concrete back here, remove some of these bushes that maybe don't make a ton of sense. These young lindens and add in some nice bushes on the side instead. There we go. So I'm thinking that the trailhead will likely be back here, but we'll need to figure that out soon. I'm not worried about that today. I am worried about getting this parking back here and making sure that we are accommodating that. So what we're gonna do is run another road behind here, and then we're gonna level this out. Then I'll grab these parking lots over here and I think this is where the majority of our parking for the courthouse is going to be. So there'll be shared parking agreements through here. And that'll be just fine. Oh, I really like the way this is turning out. I really do. So there we go. And that's neat. Uh, you know, you get these excellent views of the courthouse, but then you also get these the city services complex. I think there could be an argument to be made to add this back here. Uh, as well, but we're gonna we're gonna live with it as is. Your views don't need to be 100% unobstructed of bad things with <laughs> parking. Uh, you know, it's nice to when you can, but uh, it doesn't always happen. And then back here, I'm just gonna back these parking stalls up just a little bit so that we can add in some trees, hide the parking just a little bit. And what we're going to do is just add in a few trees here. I'm going to move that fence a bit too. So that we can add in just a little bit more back here. And this fence is really decorative in nature, so... So there we go. I really like that. I think that we could do more with these trees here though. 
So I am going to delete these and give it one more shot. Uh, there you go. Just make a. We just made a, a little bit of a meandering path here, and we can add just a couple of more trees along there, give some life to this space. And now I'm just thinking about lighting a little bit. We don't have a lot here, but we should certainly have some. Especially in the police parking lot, you'd think that they would be acutely aware of the safety issues associated with a lack of lighting. And it would be on their radar. So there we go. That's pretty good. This parking lot is fairly well lit. I might add just a couple more anyway. There we go. And now we can see... This is all of our public investment, and that investment is, the, the whole pur purpose of that is to spur developments. Now that we have this, I think it makes sense to start zoning a bit. And you can start to see that I've added in some roads that maybe I could have added a couple of more. Uh, so we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. And then I'm also going to take a look at the zoning here and see if I can consolidate some of this at all. So I'm using the zoning adjuster, and I'm just going to remove some of the zoning on here to try to consolidate the zoning in, in ways that will give us larger buildings. Uh, I do still want buildings fronting some of these main roads here, so I don't want to get overly crazy about that. Uh, one more thing I want, to, I want to accomplish is bringing transit in here. And it's going to be a little separated right now. So I picked up this excellent, excellent, excellent train track or train uh, train station so this is from sweden and it's small and that's the whole purpose of it so when i think about getting transit in here we've got two options we've got right here this track which kind of terminates here which could be an industrial area in the future and then we could also try to pull the train in this way if we wanted to uh, this is going to be the path of least resistance for now. There's nothing impeding our ability to do this. It's just kind of a, a wonky setup. Uh, and I think I'm going to screw up these power lines, <laughs> truthfully. So that'll be something to be aware of. So we're going to tunnel and have a sweeping turn through here. So that's going to be an interesting connection. So the way that we're going to make this happen, we'll, we'll start back here. I'm going to select this and then we're going to go into network multi-tool and we're gonna use the parallel tool. So I want to join up here, and this is how we're gonna make our train connection all the way to Ashland. So you can see I can just select nodes here, and it gives me a parallel track. If I do plus, if I add, if I use plus, I'll back this out a ways, and it's perfectly parallel. So this is good for me, except that we're gonna have some slopes that we have to deal with. Not the end of the world, I just want the distance to this highway to be pretty pretty parallel, if, if at all possible. Now, this is clearly not gonna work. We'll need to, to work on that. And then I think right here is where we're gonna send this looping back around underground, which will be a very expensive proposition, but this whole endeavor is very expensive and we are relying on funding from our federal government, so we should be okay. And thankfully, it looks like the parallel road tool in combination with some of our fine road tools has made this a beautiful connection. So I'm gonna back this out a little ways. And I'm wondering, can I just get real weird about this? Click on this, then just send this over. And I'm curious, will this fix this for me? Will, oh my goodness, that is wonderful. Wow, that just changed the way I do railroad tracks. Because that is actually a nice connection. That's a nice junction there. Uh, let's go in the node controller and see if there's I can break it. <laughs> so I just want to back this out a little ways so we don't have node issues. Wow, that worked beautifully. Now, I'm guessing if I go and I slope this, things are going to be absolutely spectacular. So I am not a rail grade, uh, I'm not knowledgeable in that area. I know that I'm guessing that 0.2% grade is great. Zero is definitely awesome. We'll get some speed around that, around these 
areas, but I'm guessing four is too much. Uh, why don't you in the comments, if you are aware of appropriate grades, let me know if this works. Uh, if four works, I did drop that down and I don't think that we're going to fix it, but I am curious. Uh, we are going to line this up with the road or we're going to line the road up with this rather. Uh, for this, I'm going to use my mode and I'm curious. I'm just going to, I'm going to get terrible with this. And now that I can use my tool, what will this do for me? Well, that's not going to work. <laughs> so we are going to parallel this a little ways. And I'm going to send this underground. And then, well, that's not going to look, that, that looks pretty bad. We'll get that fixed. We'll make a nice connection there. And then what I want to do now is connect these up, preferably underground if possible. And the main reason for that is we're going to have our university here. And I do not want uh, this to get in the way of the university at all. Well, that looks, that looks pretty bad. <laughs> we're going to see what we can do about this. So we'll drop into our underground view and clean some of this up. And now inside of here, I can again use this tool and hopefully grab a better angle. There we go. And continue to just iterate on this. And my goodness, the power of nodes, uh, of, of mods, uh, and nodes, <laughs> and nodes. <laughs> and I think, you know, we've got a 4.4% uh, grade. That's pretty extreme for a train. So rather than try to get our train to conform to what we're asking it to do, we're going to conform our land to it. So we're going to fill some of this in. And this is going to require us to cross the road sooner. So everything's related, you know, uh, so our power lines here that was creating some issues with our grading. And we've got just a little bit more to go here. I think that will be good to go. So it's funny, we have projects called mega projects in Wisconsin. And those are the projects that the DOT funds that are just like multi, multi billion dollar projects. Uh, this would be a mega project. <laughs> So, uh, it's it's certainly looking better. We take a look. You you can see where it is, but it's but it's okay. Now that is not okay. Okay, that looks pretty bad. But I think that we can fix this. So again, I'm going to use the parallel road tool, and let's pop in. We'll gra grab a key wall, and see if we can make that look good here. So that looks pretty rough. I was hoping that it would be better. It is not. Uh, so I'm going to undo this. I'm sure that there is a better way of handling this. It is probably using Rotterdam and the key walls that do not uh, that, that, that do not modify the terrain. I, I don't have any of those in the build right now, so we're going to have to do something a little bit different to try to, to make this work. And that's probably moving the train, uh, truthfully. Okay, I'm satisfied-ish with this. Ish. Uh, what we're going to do is add some fencing here to protect people, uh, because I could see people falling down in this. Uh, this is going to be right near our college. It's going to be a dangerous uh, location anyway. So we're going to fix this. And then to cover up some of this harshness, I'm going to try to add in some of these bushes these tall grasses. I don't know that it's going to look that great, though. It looks good from the road, from the train side. I've seen better. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about this. How terrible is this? Uh, should I just give up and accept the terrain? Uh, this it's floating if I put it, so that looks pretty bad. So I think yeah, I might just leave the grasses there. There'd be no way to, 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 to actually landscape or to 
deal with this landscaping anyway. So maybe I'll just even make it a bit more, a bit thicker. Okay, I'm gonna call that good enough for now. And I do wanna see if there's anything I can do to fix this. Uh, so this looks pretty bad. The way that I think I can resolve this is if we look for a station track. And uh, this is our North American rails. I, I need to make sure that it, it is a ground station. So I think that's this one. And then I'm gonna go in and use the upgrade untouchable. And I'll use the eyedropper and kind of just select a few of these. So the other option is to come through here and I wonder if I can just unlock this and just upgrade it. So I've got that, we've got our station track. Let's see if I can just upgrade this. It let me, all right. So that was through node controller, I just unlocked this. So maybe this supersedes upgrade untouchable. Now, uh, granted, this is only going to matter if this actually works. So let's see if we can place. I can create a new line. Interest. Okay, it is in there. And then we'll come way over here and add a line over here. And then come back and fix this. And it did not take. That is bizarre. I am going to take just a moment and see if I can get this fixed. Okay, well, it was easy enough to fix. I just had to jiggle it, and uh, apparently that does the trick. That said, I did notice that there was also an issue over in Belmont. We were missing the train station. It just disappeared. And while I was over here, I thought about using this tool over here to unlock the tracks, and I was able to delete the tracks underneath here and replace them with North American rails. So all the well that ends well, we even get to see a fire. How exciting is that? <laughs> so here we are. Things are looking up. Things are looking up. And this is absolutely gorgeous now that we were able to replace the tracks. So we'll let the fire department get back to uh, what, it, what it does best and come over here. We need to think about zoning. So I'm going to zone this. We have no theme set in this area. So we should have the ability to kind of do whatever we want. And up the center here, I think it makes a ton of sense to have a bunch of commercial. This will be our main street, our Mulligan Drive. And we're gonna keep everything lower density through here. And then over here, we're going to transition into some student housing. So we're gonna do the same thing along here. There'll be some excellent student house. Actually, no, we, we won't. This will be just regular traditional housing. We might even go, I don't think we're gonna be able to go with mansion district stuff just yet, uh, unless we plop those manually but we'll place those there. Uh, we're gonna reserve places for schools in this area that's undeveloped so far and have honestly just quite a bit of residential, but we're gonna vary the residential through here. In this area, again, another main street. So we will once again have a great deal of commercial and I'm again stopping that here and that's because we're gonna try to have office. Now, I don't know how this is gonna work. Uh, the main reason I say that is it's just really kind of a struggle to have office right now without a university. And until we get our university, I think it's gonna to continue to be a struggle. So we'll have to just see what happens there. And then through here, we're gonna have more housing. Now, interestingly, you see this already springing up, which is not what I wanted. I did not think that we had a district through here because I'm very concerned about the buildings that are gonna come here. So in general, I think for the most part, I'm okay, at least right here, having a bit of uh, attached brick, but I think that we're going to do something different right here. So here, and we'll pull this back. I want to look at our zoning. Uh, we're going to pull this back to maybe about here. And this will be university housing, and I want a university housing type theme. And then for the Van Buren along the coast, we are going to go with some lower density, which in a town this size, I think we could get away with, at least for the time being. And everything's low density, but I think that we're going to go even lower. And then as we get to the courthouse, we're going to change that even further. So now you see that we have these multiple districts and I really, really like that. So I want to set themes for each of these districts. So for Van Buren, let's go into our themes manager. 
enable theme management will get rid of unified UI. We don't need that. And I want brick downtown and brick attached. And we're not, we're not going to worry about that. Uh, the reason I want brick downtown is if we look at what's included, it's, it's a lot of commercial stuff, low and high density. And then we have some industrial as well. And then for downtown brick, that, sorry, that was downtown brick, brick attached. It's residential attached buildings of a variety of densities and some offices. So the two of those combined will give us a nice mix for this area right here. We're going to enable themes management here as well. Uh, I want to do historic. Actually, we won't even do historic American. We're just going to have university city. And that is the university city pack. Uh, and then here, we're going to enable themes management. And this will be historic American. And that's about it. Now, I don't believe that we have any commercial here. Even along this main uh, collector here, we're going to keep this residential. So this should do the trick for us. There we go. So I'm going to run this now. And this should be much better. And we're going to see this start to build out and hopefully fill in. I do. Let's let's let this go for a minute and see how it fills in. OK, and we've made some progress. We've got our first settlers coming to form our city and it's looking good. It's looking a little empty, <laughs> but it's starting to look better. And you might wonder now, I talked so much about why people would want to live here or not. Now, why did these folks move here? Certainly not for the power, because we don't have it. <laughs> so we're seeing, oh, there it is. We needed that one building. So we have a whole bunch of demand for residential and none for commercial, or at least we had. Now we have nothing. We have a bunch of abandoned buildings. But at least they're allowing power to jump. And now we're getting some utilization here. So the reason why people would want to move here is high quality city services. But, you know, uh, the, the one thing that's lacking here is a school but everything else is here. We need to connect it, of course, because <laughs> we're not there yet. But now we have high quality city services. Uh, we've got a courthouse, library. Um, the, the one thing that we're missing, we never put in our hospital or death care. And I think that those are gonna be absolutely critical. So we're gonna take care of those right now. And I think we're gonna go with the cemetery and we're going to place that cemetery in what in the future will probably seem like a, a fairly annoying place to have a cemetery, but in the, in the past might have made perfect sense. Uh, so it'll have a beautiful view of, of the shore, of the coast. And we don't want that, you know, falling into the, into the ocean, the, the, not the ocean, the, uh, the Lake Superior. But we'll put it right there right now. And the thought will be that it'll be a really serene place. And that is why that was selected. And we'll even upgrade some more roads as developers become more interested in this land, because that is ultimately what is going to be happening right now is developers are seeing this and saying, wow, like this is a this is now a, a quality place to invest in. So there we go. That's our connection right there. So that is our death care. We also need our health care. And this matches these buildings so well that I'm going to place this, even though it, you know, there's not really a need to place healthcare right by the rest of the city services. Technically, not a city service. Uh, you know, most of the time, at least in America, it is. Uh, we have EMS, uh, so that's you know ambulance pickup in some communities, uh, but often this is, is is handled by the private private development private companies there we go and I'm just gonna add a quick parking lot right next to this and it will upgrade one more road and I want you to imagine that these planning roads aren't really there they I know that they are but let's just imagine that they're not <laughs> and we need to set the we'll set this to the Clearwater County fire ambulance and there we go a nice little city services area. And look at that. Oh, there it went zooming by us. I want to take a look at that, though. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Love that. And they're using our roads, which have only uh, only stop signs. 
<laughs> so we're good. Uh, I want to do. I do want to take a look at this. How are we doing in terms of trips? Eleven passengers last week. Not so good. Uh, let's look at our line. And right now we have this Van Buren shuttle. Uh, six vehicles. I think that we could do something better. We're gonna use. I am gonna use a bullet train. It's a. It's a fairly long trip, and with that change, why don't we have a brief city tour where we go on a ride. Okay, and that was a nice little tour. Uh, obviously not a lot of utilization just yet, but I have a feeling that's gonna change in the future. I do wanna call a little bit of a mulligan though before we end this on some of these uh, buildings that are abandoned because uh, they didn't have power. <laughs> so we're going to eliminate these and hopefully that will spur some development in this area. These are the university houses. Uh, in the next one, we're gonna need to focus on that university. We have a whole bunch of office uh, space and that none of that's developing. And I think the main reason for that is we don't have any educated workers. We also might want to start considering a little bit of higher density once we fill in the rest of this area. I want to do this in an organic way. And for me, that is going to, to mean that we do zone this with a lower density first before we start up zoning things and I, th that's to me that's the right way of doing it that's the way that development actually occurs so um with that i think that we're gonna leave it here i hope that you've enjoyed this one we've accomplished a lot and i've really enjoyed it uh if you enjoyed this episode please hit the like button if you aren't subscribed please consider doing so and i can't wait to see you in the next one take care Bye bye <laughs>